Hello and welcome to another Scottish mountain walking guide. In today's walk, we travel to Inveray near Braemar to climb An Sokach, Ben Wuran Vor, and Carn Vach. You would typically climb An Sokach from Glen Clooney as a solitary walk. Including An Sokach with Ben Wuran Vor and Carn Vach adds an additional 2.2 kilometres to the walk, and most of this is across open terrain with no path to follow. It's also an additional 350 metres of ascent. We both agreed it was worth the extra effort. And one of the highlights from today's walk was my first in the wild sighting of an adder. The total distance for this route is 34 kilometres with 1,374 metres of ascent. And as it's a bit longer than last week's walk, we decided to use mountain bikes on the gravel road to the ruin of Altanur Lodge. It's about 9 kilometres from the start. If you're only walking, there is a slightly shorter route saving about 3.5 kilometres. I'll include a link to both routes in the description below. There are no exposed sections or scrambling required. There are some steep descents and loose scree where care is required. In summer conditions, it's expected to take around 9 hours to walk and cycle. Parking is free. Overnight parking is not permitted. There are no height restrictions and you can probably fit around 20 cars. It's around 2.5 hours drive from both Glasgow or Edinburgh. Starting from the Inveray car park, you're going to head southwest along a gravel road. It will be marked as a private road and you're going to just go along entering into the woodland and then you're going to go by a few buildings here and continue along the gravel road and it's going to leave the woodland and come out to an open sort of moorland area. Follow that gravel road, go over a wooden bridge. It starts to rise up hill a little bit steeper here. And you certainly notice it when you're cycling. And just continue to follow that road. There's a slight fork here where there's a road that splits off. Just ignore that and keep to your right going straight ahead. And you continue to follow that road. It's very easy to navigate at this point following the gravel road. Quite a rough gravel road and it's not the easiest to cycle on. It's continuously uphill but it's not very steep and you continue to make your way up. You're going to come to a replanted woodland area that's fenced off here. And that's where the ruin of Altanur Lodge is. When you come to the end of that, we thought this was the best place to leave the bikes. The gravel road ends completely where this road goes off here. So having left their bikes behind, follow the path on a little bit to that turning circle. And then you'll see there's a sort of 4x4 track that goes down. There's a ford to cross a river here and some big stepping stones so you can cross over the river and continue to follow that rough gravel grassy track. There is a path here on the hillside further up and I'm not sure if there is some sort of path that goes down across here somewhere. We couldn't spot it. I haven't looked at the maps and seen the trails that are on the maps. This looked like the easiest way to get onto the bottom of this little path here. And there is a bit of a drop down here down to where the stream is and a sort of steep incline at the other side. But once you're up on that, a little bit of a boggy section around here. So that's why we went further south to go around and above that and then crossed over. This path is clearly visible from over here when you're not in cloud. And once you're on that path, you can follow that up. It's a very narrow, not well used path, but it is clear most of the way. There are some sections where it fades away to, to nothing very much. But as you come out, it gets a bit rockier the higher up you get, and then it starts to flatten off. There's no path to follow once you get higher up. You just keep walking up towards the highest point ahead. A couple of little cairns. And there's one cairn quite close to the summit, which is not the summit. Further south, there's a, a large cairn. From that summit, we're going to return back down, descend very close to the route that we took on the ascent. And when you get a bit further down, then you're going to head directly west off the top. This is very steep. There is no path to follow. So you just got to take care. A little bit of zigging and zagging just to make it a little bit easier to descend. Heading down, we crossed over at this point because it looked very boggy down here. This lower section didn't look so good. So we crossed over the stream and then cut across. And this was the last point where there was a good source of water to fill up. So we filled up our water filter systems at this stream here. Now there is a path over here and you might want to take a shallower line. But again, it looked a bit boggier and the terrain was a bit rougher looking. So we opted to go more up directly and we could see a path cutting across. It's not shown on the map, but there is a path that cuts across here. We joined onto the path and then it faded away again. We could see the, the main walking path here. So we joined onto that. And from here on up this steep edge, as you're heading this westerly direction, it's quite a clear path to follow. It gets a little bit fainter as the steepness eases off and you're making way up and it's a little bit rockier but generally you're making your way up onto the higher ground and then you go around the ridge and there's a final little pull up to the summit of Ben Woranvor 
and there's a large cairn. From that summit you're going to retrace your steps back along this ridge heading in an easterly direction. When you come to this point here, there is a large cairn over here which is what we kind of headed for and we cut down and then joined up a path here but I'm pretty sure there's another path around about here more to the west side of this ridge and it takes you directly down to this path. But there was a path here as well so there's a couple of different routes that take you down the sort of northwest side of this ridge. It's very steep, lots of scree, just need to take care. It doesn't feel exposed. It's not like a cliff edge you're going down. You can see it's a fairly even descent. You make your way down. Once you're down off the steepest part, all the way along here is very peaty, long grass, no distinct path to follow. There are sections where you can clearly see the path and then it just fades away to nothing. It is quite difficult to navigate even on a clear day. Very boggy, peaty section here. Some sections of it were quite firm and then other sections were very soft. So you just need to take care as you're crossing over here. This is a large flat area looks like it's slightly higher but it's not noticeable when you're walking across it. What you're aiming for is this sort of very flat ridge but it's not even a ridge. You can just tell when it's clear you can see that it descends off this side and descends off this side but you're going across this very wide flattish area with no distinct path to follow. Coming out the other side I went a bit to the left. You're aiming straight ahead. You can see this top if it's clear. You can see there's a top there and you can see obviously the summit over here and you're try trying to aim up in between the two of them. If you go too much to the right across here, this has got a lot of boggy, uneven ground. It's actually easier to head up to the ridge line and then turn right and there is a path here. You can follow a path along the ridge line. It starts to get a little bit steeper but it's nothing difficult and you make your way up. We were not sure what the summit was. You can see it shows a sort of summit here in this map at this point. But if you look at the detailed OS map, there's a cairn mark right here and that's where the 946 metre altitude is indicated although this cairn over here is the larger of the two cairns. We visited both just to be on the safe side. If you're following the Walk Highlands route they recommend descending down this path that's shown here and it kind of makes its way down and then cuts across. When we were on our walk we spotted a large path going across the countryside and there were two or three diggers, large JCB diggers on the mountainside and so they'd made their own path across the hillside here and it pretty much took you down to that turning circle. It looked quite good from a distance so we thought we'd give it a try. It looked like a more direct route back to where the bikes were and so we came down, there is a path that comes down here to this point, it takes you all the way down to the Bielach and from there we cut straight down because we could see the path right about here and we joined that path. It was easy enough to follow, it was a bit squidgy, a bit soft. I mean it wasn't terrible and we made our way back down the path back to where the bikes were. If you're walking then you can follow this down to the BLAC and curve round and don't go all the way up to the summit here but you can curve round and join this track here and it doesn't show it in that version of the map but if you go to the full map you can see there's a gravel road that starts or ends at this point. And that road takes you all the way back down to the, the road you started in the morning. That's the shortcut that gets you back, saves you about three and a half kilometres. As we had to go back to get the bikes, we obviously come back down to Altour Lodge. You pick up the bikes, returning back to the car park on the bikes. It took us one hour to get to here in the morning. It took us half an hour to get back in the evening. You have no decisions to make on the way back. You just follow the road all the way back down to the car park. Good morning. It's just after 6 a.m. I'm at the Inveray car park. There's no overnight parking here, so I stayed at the Lynn of D car park last night. Got my camper van back. I'm just enjoying the lovely sunrise. Weather today is going to get very wet, apparently. From the car park, you head off southwest. Where that white sign is, the private road, you go up that private road. I'm going to wait a while, I've got company today, so they're not due to get here for another hour or so. Just have some breakfast. The time is now 7.20 and we're ready to go. We're going to cycle the first nine kilometres and then leave our bikes at the end of the road and walk the rest. So we're heading off from the car park southwest.
you come to this fork in the road, we just stay on the right hand side, going straight ahead, the main road. We're almost at the end of the cycling section. This road, it's not bad. It's just a little bit rough. My mountain bike is a hard tail and I've not been out on the bike for a long time so it's really a lot harder than I would have liked. So when you come to this big turning circle, we're going to head down here and go over the ford and the trail is on the other side for a little bit. It takes us up the side of Ansoka. We're now going to turn off this track, head into the right, we're going to contour around to that little stream. There's, you can see, just a little low point between the, this hillside and the, and Sokak. And from there, we'll see. You could go straight up; it's fairly steep. We might go a little bit further around to the right and then up. There's some tracks, but it's basically go up to the top there. We've come across a bit, we're just going to go down and over the stream here and straight up the other side. It's clearing up on there. You can see there's a path just coming down by the side of that scree there. It's hard to tell where it starts. It is quite possible if we had continued up the track a bit further somewhere down there it crosses over and goes up it's not marked in any maps but we're doing all right i think we'll go a wee bit to the left you can see there's some boggy sections there some peat and then go back round to the right It's due to be misty until about 11 o'clock, it's half past nine at the moment. Once we got onto the path that comes up here, it's not too bad, it's, it's fairly steep. And that path starts just above the, the peaty section. There must be a route that goes down to the left, it's not visible from here. So we've got 200 metres to go to get to the top.
And when you come to this little cairn, the actual summit's about 50 or 60 metres southeast of here, just over there, a bit bigger. Might have a trig point, looks like it's got a windbreak. This is at the summit of Ann Soccer. It's got very windy. There's really nothing to see today. So it's taken us two and a half hours to get to the top, one hour of cycling, and then an hour and a half up that steep slope. And we'll descend down about 280 metres and then go back up the other side. So from the summit, we're going to head a little bit left of that other cairn there. Basically back the way we came to start with. Yeah, you can see there's a bit of a gravel trail here just to start you off in the right direction. And once we get a bit further over, we'll just have to double check our position on the map. There's no features really to help navigate towards. So we'll need to use the GPS. Once we get underneath the cloud, it'll be easy to spot where we're going. Just brighten up a little bit. Actually, you can see where we're going now. <laughs> Look at that. There you go, you just aim for that scree and the green on the right hand side of it, we're just aiming straight for that. There is no path down here, we're heading down to where the, the river, you can see the sandy banks, we're heading down to there, go back up the other side, there is a path on the other side, you can see a bit of the zigzag higher up. So we'll have to cross over the heather to join that path. You just take your time going down here. I've done this before. It's steep, but it's not too bad. It's clearing up nicely. Still quite windy. So we've made it safely down the steep section. It's not really difficult, it's just you've got to be careful. There's no path. I'm going to go straight across here and up, maybe sort of up the centre of the frame there. You can see there's a path that cuts across the mountain. We're aiming for that path and then go round to the right and it will join the main walker's path up onto this Monroe. From here, we're just going to go straight ahead. There's a stream, you can see that bare patch of mud, that's where the stream's ahead of us. We're going to fill up there, that's the last point to get water until we get that back down to the bikes almost. There's some boggy sections where you might be able to fill up, but it's not as nice as here. And we're going to go straight up and join the path. The path cuts right across and then go round to the right and then join the main path. come up this section of heather without a path and we've joined a faint path here so now we're going to go round to join the main walking path we've made it onto the main path a little white cairn there 
steep section to get up into the main ridge. After that, I don't think it's too bad. Not to the summit anyway. And Sokka is clear at the moment, it's 11.40, weather forecast has been pretty accurate. Karen Vach is clear as well, you can easily see the path going up to it from here, at least the last section of it. We're at around about 940 metres, about the same height as at Sokka. Uh, this summit's at 10.40 metres. So we've got a hundred meters to go, not too much. The start of this was very steep, just as bad as Ansoka. But once you're over the top there, it flattens off and it's quite a nice walk. But it was very windy down there, so I really couldn't record any video. Almost at the summit of Ben Woran Vor. Just a little bit of a ridge walk to go round. We return back to this spot and then we go across there. At the summit of the Moran Vor. It is very windy. But it's cleared up nicely. See the summit of Karn Vach, the top's all light slate coloured rock. It's almost directly north from here and 100 metres lower the summit. From here you return kind of northeast back along that path on the ridge up onto that little top over there. We came around on the right hand side as you look back on the Going across there, we're going to go down the left hand side and then all the way up to that top. You can see the Cairn Gorms, the Devil's Point, the Larry Crew, Ben McDewey. So from the summit, we're going to head back the way we came. It's just it's almost east, just slightly north of east, around the ridge over there down. Still windy.
and beyond the visibility, you've seen a lot of cairn there. The path goes off to the left before the cairn. And when you're going down the side here, you'll know you're on the right path because it's very clear and obvious, well worn. We can see a well-worn path here, goes off to the right. I'm expecting it to zigzag back down again. We're now on to the top of the scree section where it zigzags down. I will say that the path was a little bit faint back there before it joined up to this. So, just head down here. This is the kind of scree that if you're an experienced skier, you'll enjoy it. Half the mountain comes down with you. Wouldn't want to go up this way. And we're out of the wind mostly, so it's a bit nicer. We've come down a little bit to the wrong side of where the path is meant to be. So we, should, we need to go across the left. I think it takes you across the highest point in this bog ahead. And then up the other side. So I guess we weren't really paying attention, we missed the path. There are multiple paths. I can see a path that those people are going up. You can see a couple of clear ones coming down over there. So we should have turned down a fair bit before that cairn. We'll soon join the path, it's just ahead. We're now on the path, but it would be easy to miss. It doesn't get much traffic by the looks of it. The path here is not very clear. We saw people have been going straight for the summit, which isn't the proper route. You can make it a faint trail here. What you're looking out for is once we get to the, the edge ahead here, it's going to drop off and you should see a very shallow BLAC that drops off on the left and the right and you go across the middle of that. And from there you go straight up onto the ridge line in between these two tops that you can see. So that's what you're aiming for. Once you're on the ridge, it's an easy walk along to the summit. You can see ahead, there's a broad flat area that drops off on the left and the right. Although finding the path through the middle of it is not going to be that obvious. We're on a faint path just now. You can see paths at the other side of it where the grass is a bit greener past the bog. That's what we're aiming for. big bog ahead. We're going to go to the left. It looks like that's where the path is marked. Not that there is any path around here. You see occasional footprints. <laughs> that's about it. When you get to this big boggy section, it does look like you do go through the middle of it on the map. Maybe go up the right hand side and then across. The ridge is just up ahead, but we're just going to cut the corner. That section is tricky. Very difficult to navigate if you're in cloud. 
just need to keep an eye on your map, your compass, your GPS if you've got coverage. I've not seen problems with GPS coverage in a long time. Used to be if you had thick cloud, your GPS might not get a satellite log. Seems to be okay nowadays. Without there being a very clear path, it's a difficult terrain to walk over. Makes it much more difficult. It takes more out of you physically than you would imagine just looking at a line on the map. I made it up onto the ridge track. Looks like a four wheel drive type track. So you turn to your right. Now that we're on the ridge, the wind's picked up again. There's the summit of Karnvach. You can even see the coot. You can see the Cairn Gorms quite clearly. That Monroe. It's spelled like Avon, but it's not how you pronounce it. You can see the tower and the summit. So when you get to the summit of Cairn Vach, there's three cairns. Looking at the map, we think the smaller one here on the right is the summit cairn. The bigger cairn over there is also shown. But it's on the map, it's not next to the 946 meter altitude, but we'll go to both. So we're at one of the summits of Cairn Vach. This is the summit. The, the altimeter says we're at 947 and it was one meter higher than the other summits as well so it's a pretty good bet that this is the summit. You can see across the Ansoka and all the way along the ridge all the way to the back there. It is 2.30 in the afternoon. The forecast is to rain at 3 p.m. We estimate it'll take another hour to get back down to the bikes and then maybe half an hour to 40 minutes to cycle back out. So we're now at the second top of Karnbach and the altimeter is reading between 947 and the 948, so slightly higher than the other one. Not too certain which one's the top. We're going to head slightly south of east, down to the next top that's on this ridge. If you're following the Walk Highlands route, they'd take you back more towards the first top and then curve back down. But on the way here we saw a sort of 4x4 track on the other side, probably used by those um, JCBs or diggers that we saw as we came in. And we're going to go across this way and drop down onto that road which we think will be easier to walk on. So you can see a path straight ahead going down that and across to that b lag and we're basically we're just going to keep going straight ahead from here to take us back down to the valley where the bikes are. So we can see the road we're aiming for, it's a sandy coloured bit, we'll try and zoom in on it. Yeah there it is there. So that should take us right back down to where the bikes are. 
we'll see how it goes. Made it onto this track, trail, whatever you want to call it. It's not a properly constructed road by any means. It's just the where from where the from where the tank tracks of those diggers have crossed the countryside. So we'll see how it goes. This track is rough. It's slightly easier than just walking straight across the heather because it is flattened and you've got something to follow. But it's squidgy, slippy, muddy. I think I'd recommend just going the normal descent path. Taken us about seven hours and 15 minutes to do the walking part of this walk. We're back at the bikes. So now we'll go down the road back to the car park, heading in a northeast direction. Back at the car park, it's quarter past four. It's about nine hours in total since we left the car park. About half an hour cycle back, an hour to cycle up. Definitely a lot more uphill on the way out and much more downhill on the way back. Didn't even seem that much. It's fairly level, but just slightly uphill for the most part. Hope you enjoyed the video. Thanks for watching. And I look forward to showing you more in the next one. Bye for now.